Alexa Curtis here, and you're listening to This Is Life Unfiltered, my weekly podcast on entrepreneurship, fearlessness, and getting out of your comfort zone. So before I get into this podcast, I want to remind you guys to follow This Is Life Unfiltered on social media at T-I-L-U podcast, as well as my personal social media, which is at Alexa underscore Curtis. And by the time this episode will have come out, I will have released where the next Be Fearless Summit will be hosted at, and it's at Berkeley. So I'm really excited. I've been getting a ton of submissions for people who are wanting to speak and sponsor. And so keep your eyes and everything open for um, kind of the next steps with who the speakers are on BeFearlessSummit.org as well as the social media at Be Fearless Summit. So a few weeks ago, my assistant actually sent me a text and she sent me somebody named Ava and she was like, you got to check this girl out. She's perfect for the podcast. And I was like, okay, if, if she's sending me someone, I'm like really picky who comes on this podcast. Like she's got to be good. So I clicked on the girl's Instagram and I was like, oh, kind of interesting. And she was like, my mom checked her out. And like, we just think she's really great for the podcast. So Today, I've got Ava Michelle, and I'm really excited to have you I on. I love that. Thank That's you so, so much great. for being here. No, thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Well, you are young and awesome, and you're the star of a Netflix show, everything. And you are Crazy. probably way much better at telling your story than I am. So I'm going to give you the reins to tell us about yourself. Tell us, okay. I don't even know where we start. Um, so I'm originally from Michigan, so Midwest gal at heart. Um, I started dancing originally when I was two years old, and then my mom actually opened a dance studio in Michigan when I was three. And so I grew up there just dancing and competing and doing all that fun stuff. And then when I was 10 years old, I decided to go audition for actually AUDC, which was a show that Abby Lee Miller was doing. Um, and somehow I made it on Dance Moms. And so I was on that, and that really just opened my eyes to what was available in the entertainment industry and really got me into it, knowing that there was more than just these small town dreams. So um, that eventually took me out to L.A. And so I started modeling because I was growing a lot and was like, why not use that? And then dancing and singing and went into acting. So we moved out here about three years ago and just working all the time and you know training and you know and then tall girl came about after many auditions of being told no because of my height so it's just been an amazing journey especially this past year it's been really great well we're gonna get into tall girl in a little bit but I want you to take us back to your childhood I'm Mm -hmm. from a small town too and I can tell right off the bat that you are really humble and actually just seem like a really genuine person which in Hollywood you. you probably know is quite hard to come across right yeah I mean that's always been something that's been really important to me and something that my mom instilled in me at a very young age I remember her telling me the second that you think you are better than anyone else we are done and I think that it's it's so important to be humble and to you know stick to your roots and also I mean this industry is an industry that you're constantly working with people so you have to be a good person to work with because that is is really going to be the thing that books you job after job you know just being pleasant to be around and all of that um but being a good person is like top of my list importance (laughs) so growing up when you were in school I mean did you ever have I guess your own personal experiences with bullying or I know you talk a lot now about mental health as well yeah for sure I went through a lot I mean as we all do in school and we all have different things but definitely I mean I was always that kid who wasn't really into what everybody else was into I was definitely really serious about dance because I knew that I wanted to be a professional dancer and that's what I was going to do and a lot of my friends were not okay with that because, you know, they'd invite me to their birthday parties, whatever. And I'm like, sorry, I have a dance competition and they'd get mad at me and we wouldn't be friends anymore. Um, So that was kind of difficult going through that because nobody really understood my seriousness in it and they didn't take me seriously for doing that. Um, But also my height was always a a really big struggle for me just with my own self-confidence because you know, we're in school and I think our biggest focus is just to blend in and all be the same and because we don't want to be seen. And um, I stood out, literally. So that was really difficult for me. And just the comments that kids would say sometimes really they shouldn't have, but they really have stuck with me. And yeah, so that was how tall are you? Difficult. I'm six one. Oh wow, so, over. so you're tall. And and at tall. what age do you feel like you started to get really tall? I've always been tall. Wow, okay. I was always the tallest in my class. I 
never really had like a huge growing spurt. I just was always really tall. Yeah, which I mean, high school sucks, especially. Yeah, and it was also difficult because I was really skinny too. So I had a lot of people telling me that I was anorexic or like that my mom wasn't feeding me. And I can tell you right now, I'm the biggest foodie <laughs> out there. So I got really offended yeah. about that because I'm like, you should see what I eat sure. daily. Um, so that was really difficult, especially because that is a huge mental health issue. And for someone to accuse me of doing that is now that I think of it, really, really wrong. Um, yeah, so I, I was just always tall. I mean, I was 5'10 at 13, so. Looking back, do you have any advice for your younger self? Like, knowing that you were so, I guess, kind of insecure and were bullied at that time, mm -hmm. like, now that you've gotten through that, what advice do you have for your younger self? Um, I think, I mean, my mom always gave me, honestly, the best advice, and I think it's just keep going if this is what you want to do. Um, you know, put your blinders on and just do it. Be a good person. Be kind to everyone. Work hard and, you know, you'll get there. But I, I also really believe that the journey that we have is meant to happen and what we go through is meant to make us strong for what's to come. So honestly, even though I went through some really terrible times, I wouldn't change it for the world. Okay, so let's talk about Dance Moms. So yeah. you're in Michigan, and then you get yes. casted in this show, which I think films in Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay, okay. So then at what point did you end up going there, and were you nervous about that? I mean, you probably oh God, were. I was so nervous. How old? So nervous. I was 10. 10. Okay, that's really young. It was really, yeah, I was really young, and I was so nervous. Like, I just remember the first time that I went on camera, and, you know, I was really terrified of just the whole cast, the moms and, you know, Abby and all of that. I remember like the first time I was like trying to smile and my cheeks were just like shaking because I was so nervous. And then you have to go dance. And so being nervous and dancing in a studio, it just, but it also, you know, made me so aware of like being on a set and being a part of a cast and like how all that works because I had no clue whatsoever. Sure. And it was a really unexpected thing because I wasn't even auditioning for Dance Moms. I was auditioning for like the other show that she had. So it's just, yeah, it was crazy. Did you at one point have this moment where you were like, I want to be in entertainment and you told your mom and were like, this is it. I want to be in this industry or kind of was it a, a slower um, growth? I always like I would probably say when I was probably eight, I was like, mom, I always, you know, when you do those yeah. like little packages of like, what do you want to be when you're younger or when you're older? <laughs> what do you want to be when you, when you grow <laughs> up? It was always, I want to be a professional dancer with like a little stick figure of a ballerina underneath it. And that was always my thing. So yeah, going on Dance Moms was like, okay, you're, my dreams are coming yeah. true. So that was really, really cool for me. But it couldn't have just been that easy. I mean, most people no. when they go on Instagram, and especially like you have such an awesome and huge social media following, but there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. So as somebody who, um, you know, was on that show and now you're not on that show anymore, um, but you are on movies and whatnot. I mean, uh, what advice do you have for kids who are listening and something that I'm asked quite often is like how do you find that drive inside of you like you know they all want to like hustle and right. and like have that drive to like be successful but then it's like no one ever actually knows what they're passionate about they're just mm -hmm. obsessed with the concept of hustle and like being really passionate about something but they don't know what to be passionate about right. um, but it seems like you and I kind of knew that from a young age young so age, yeah. for people who are listening and are like I want the fire that Ava and Alexa have but I can't find it right. and that's a hard question to answer it is a hard question I think what helped me with that was honestly dance was mm -hmm. having that work ethic at such a young age and dance is one of those things that you really can't fake so it was always you you get out of it what you put into it and I think that that is a really strong um, thing for everyone right now I feel like in this day and age there's different ways that you can do things and I think we're just trying we're finding little shortcuts but I think the biggest thing is just put the work in and if this is something that you want once you do that, everything will start coming and know that I think my biggest thing was I had ups and downs of like, you know, we all doubt ourselves all the time. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this. It was always that voice in the back of my head. But like I said, the journey is, is meant to be and what's supposed to happen is going to happen. So if you really work hard, put the work in kind to everyone, even if it's a person walking down the street, you never know who that is, especially in L.A., um, yeah, so I think it's just, I think it's your work ethic and just believing in yourself. Huge thing, really hard to learn, but do that. <laughs> and you're how old now? 
I'm 17. Okay, so yeah. if you take it back, so you were on the show when you were 10. 10. So it's not like this is something that happened overnight. No, it's been a very long, difficult journey yeah. for sure. And that's what's kind of funny is because with this movie, everyone's like, newcomer, Ava Michelle. And I'm like, but I'm really not. Is You know, it, it's course. my first big acting role, but I've been auditioning for a while and I've gotten so close to so many huge jobs and honestly a lot of the times it would come down to my height mm -hmm. of like the opposite is shorter than you so we can't book you or you're just not the look the height is great but you're just not the look that we want because we want like this basketball player and I'm not necessarily that look yeah um so yeah that was always really difficult but it, it has been a journey and a lot of times they, long I feel like they don't also tell you like casting directors and stuff like they'll just be like, oh, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. And that's hard, especially I ran into that with dance a lot. And that was something that was really difficult for me because, like I said, I always wanted to be a professional dancer. And then I got out here and because I always grew up in my mom's studio, my height was never a, a topic. It was never a thing because she just always made it work and it was never anything that I ever worried about. But when I started getting out here and realizing that they wanted everyone to be the same height and blend because most dance things are group dancers. And so I would, they'd be like, Ava, your talent is good enough, but you just don't blend with this group. And that at a young age is so hard because you're like, I've I'm a perfectionist and I'm like, what can I do? What can I do to get this? What can I do to be better? And it was something that was totally out of my control. So let's talk about tall girl, yeah. uh, because obviously that is a huge thing. And that's kind of like, you know, you said that yeah. newcomer word. And mm -hmm. that's that's really kind of put you on the map. Yes. Um, so tall girl explores the double standard on height between men and women. Why do you think being tall as a woman is treated as a negative when being tall is a positive thing for men, which I can relate to? And right. all my friends are like, oh, like I only want to date a tall guy. And I'm like, yeah. do not look at any other <laughs> thing. I know. It's, it's very difficult because me as a person, I... I look at who people are way more than their height. I mean, it is a thing that we obviously think of, but I think it's really just the images that we've built, whether it's the film industry or the social media um, of this perfect couple and what they look like. And so we've kind of created this stereotype in our mind that we didn't know we created, but it's there. And so I think it's really cool for us to have a movie that addresses something such as height because it really is something that we a lot of us struggle with, whether we're tall or we're short or, um, I mean, really any difference, but it's not something that's been addressed yet. And I think that bringing awareness to it is really important because it can make us think, are we stereotyping these people or are we honestly stereotyping ourselves and limiting ourselves to what we could do or who we could be with. Yeah. And what you said at the beginning of the episode is a really great is a really great note because you mentioned that people would always say that you were really thin or like mm -hmm. and your mom's not eating you and, and people yeah. are like, oh, I want to be called really thin. Like that's that sounds really right. great when in reality that's also a form of it, it bullying. Can be negative. Right. And that's that was the hard thing for me growing up was that I would I mean, still now, I'll walk into Trader Joe's and have four people come up to me and tell me how tall I am and that I should play basketball and that I should take karate for my self-esteem. That was a weird one. What? Um, yeah. I was like, was it I a Trader Joe's, a Whole Foods? Like, Trader what? Joe's. Really? Okay, okay. <laughs> or, one was at Vaughn's and okay. I got at an, in an argument with this guy who came up to me and he was like, wow, you're really tall. And it's it's always that, what do I say back yeah. thing? But I'm like, okay, thank you. And he's like, you're like 6'4", right? And I was like, no, I'm 6'1". He goes, no, you're 6'4". <laughs> I was like, uh, Nope, I'm 6'1". No, he's like, well, I'm 6'2", and you're like two inches. And I was like, wow, am I really getting into arguments? So yeah. it was always those comments of like, oh, my gosh, you're so skinny and you're so tall. Not that their intentions are bad, but it, it builds up and makes you very self-conscious about it and made me really insecure about it because of all these comments. So, you know, it's, it's what people look at as negative or positive. They might not think of it, but it really does have an effect on someone. I know your mom, you've mentioned a, a lot of times too, has really kind of helped support you in, in so that much. way. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of kids out there who don't necessarily have that support from their yeah. parents. Is there any advice you have from them, bullying or cutting, like anything right. they might be dealing with? Yeah, I think that was honestly one of my hardest things going into my role was trying to figure out why Jody was so closed off and why she had stopped doing the things that she loved. And that was because she didn't have that support system that I had. Because honestly, if I didn't have my mom, I'd, I don't know if I would 
have kept going in doing this because it is really difficult. So I think the thing that Jody did, she didn't have a support system from her family or she wasn't able to relate to them at all. Um, so I think what she did is she found the people around her that truly loved her and supported her for who she is. And I think that's the most important thing for us to do. I think a lot of times in school we can get caught up in the looks of our crowd or who somebody is or who's popular or who's prettier. And I think we really need to take a step back and say, who are we surrounding ourselves with? Is this healthy? Are they helping me reach my goals? Are they helping me get good grades or are they not? You know, and so um, I think that is honestly the most important thing is no matter who they are, whether it is your parents or a sibling or a friend, surround yourself with someone who supports you honest and genuinely, you know. It's really cool that Netflix even pursued kind of a movie like this. And yep. you are really the perfect person for it Thank because, you. I mean, you're a tall girl. Right. But how did that opportunity come in? I mean, was it presented to you? No. Or did you go no. through the casting process? Oh, people ask me that. I'm like, I wish. That was, no, it was honestly the hardest audition process I've ever been through. Um, I, my manager actually sent me over the not the script, but just the breakdown when it came out. And it was like in all caps. She's like, Ava, you need to read this right now. It's literally you. This this is it. And she's not like that ever. She's like very downplaying mm -hmm. things. And so I remember I was like getting off the exit with my mom and I read the character description of Jody, and we both had chills because it reminded me so much of what I had been through. And it's been a story that I've wanted to tell for a while. So after that, I went in for my first audition in August last year and went in, went out. I was like, I think it went good. I don't know. Three months go by. I'm like, mm, didn't get no, it. No that comment, sucks. anything. Oh, nothing. And then I found out that they were doing a worldwide casting during that time. So they were taking self-tape submissions oh, yeah. worldwide. And that was terrifying to hear. And then, so three months after um, I originally auditioned I went back in and I was back in five more times it was crazy just with um you know casting and then directors and then chemistry reads with the other characters and then Netflix came in and the producers came in and at one point I swear to god there were like 12 people in this tiny little room watching us and my my last chemistry read was like six and a half hours so they really put me through it but I'm, I'm really glad because I feel that it really made me feel like I earned it you know, but it was a very difficult process. Yeah. And I mean, people only look at the final project, right. so they're not seeing that like intense period of time. But right. I mean, did you do certain things like during that period of time? Because I think everyone can right. relate to at some point, whether they're waiting for their dream job or their college, like that period of time, you have no clue what's going to happen. No clue at all. I was so nervous. Yeah. So nervous. Um, I don't even know. I just I really try to keep my mind off of it as much as I could. I kept, you know positive affirmations as much as I could trying to manifest anything I could um I I actually journaled a lot during that time and I think that actually really helped me just like talking about it and getting that out but I, I think it's funny because during the audition process I actually kind of became Jody in mm -hmm. a way because I started like doing things that she would do yeah. my mom was like that was like a Jody sarcastic comment. And then I like painted my nails these color and I was like, wait, I think this is like Jody's color. And so it was funny to see that growth of like through that process, I started to learn her character so much more. So I think that really helped me out during that. Yeah. But it was really funny to watch. I was like, oh, okay, this is fun. <laughs> well, I, I watched the show called When They See Us. I don't know if you've seen it on Netflix. It. No. Amazing. It's it's like a documentary. It's very different than Tall Girl. Um, but one of the actors, he's young like you, um, and he said the same thing. Like he had to get in the role of this character who was in prison and, you know, he used to like go and sit in jail cells just like on the floor to try and relate to that. And I mean, that is also taxing in a way so because crazy. you have to, it must be, I assume, like an out-of-body experience. Yeah, it it's, it's trying to figure out how you embody this person while still staying true to who you are and bringing your own personal experiences and own little, um, your essence into the life of this character, which, you know, it was my first time really being able to do this. And I had obviously so many amazing people surrounding me and helping me. So it was, oh, it's 
the best. I love it so much. On the topic of social media and bullying, mental health, whatnot, uh, I know I mentioned to you off the camera that I've had a few other dance mom stars like mm-hmm. on my Radio Disney show, um, Fearless Every Day, which did recently end. And all of you guys have this similar thing. The kind of pattern is that none of you were viral overnight, like right. sensations. You didn't post a video and, and go viral. So I'm right. curious from your experience, which I personally think is awesome. Um, from from your experience, do you think that you would be where you are now and have been so passionate about that role if you had sent been a Viner and posted like a video and then just went viral? Um, no, I, 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 I mean, possibly it's everybody always has some their life before that. And I don't think we ever really see that. So, I mean, they could be like me and, you know, people view me as tall girl just getting that. But there's so much more in, before it. Um, but I do think that, you know, it's those humble beginnings. It's those working hard and going through everything and going through those auditions and um, training all the time that really make you appreciate what you have more. And when you finally get there, you can really, truly be thankful for it. So, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't change my journey at all. I mean, it would be cool to just like post a video of me yodeling in Walmart and just (laughs) become famous. I mean, I, I'd like to see how that feels, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's cool, but I think that going like I said, going through the process the and process. having this long journey has really made me so thankful for it. Yeah. I know you also uh, have had a lot of interviews with the cast of the show as well. Yeah. You guys even wrote a song together. We did. So, I mean, the chemistry there also must have been a huge like kind of force for you to stay so passionate about this film. Yeah, for sure. And we, we all got along so well. They're all such talented, but also like the most amazing human beings and just like spending time with them and learning from each other was really cool. And now we all have relationships while we're back in LA and actually one of our castmates like moved to LA after the movie so it's really where was nice it filmed in, uh, in New Orleans oh okay yeah so we filmed in New Orleans and oh, New Orleans is so fun I haven't been there but it's like my it's one place very on my bucket haunted. list yeah <laughs> very haunted yeah but very fun and the beignets. I know. That's what Dumbo. I see the pictures of. The oh, my gosh. Like, I totally gained weight there. This is totally <laughs> the truth from somebody who, if people are saying you are not eating, I can, like, see it in your eyes Guys, that you're, like, still thinking about them. Ate she eats. <laughs> so much food. And the cast, thank God, we were all huge foodies. So we ate so much. And then we would eat, like, our three meals on set. And then we'd leave set, like, Obsessed. late at night and be like, let's go get sushi. And it's, like, 2 a.m. And so we just go and eat more food for, like. That was great eating. Now habits, I hear the food there is like amazing. It's yeah. so good. It's very fried, but it's pretty great. The gumbo is like. Well, I hear people also say that like is it Cafe Du Monde that mm-hmm. like that's Cafe not. The, but there's better yeah. places for beignets. Like I don't know. Um, the stereotype. I don't know. Mom's I mean, shaking her head over here. Like nope, that's the I, one. I know <laughs> of Cafe Du Monde, and honestly, they're pretty amazing. Good. Okay, good they're to know. Pretty amazing. Yeah, and I wore black the first time I ate them, which was not powdered smart sugar, because yeah. the powdered sugar was everywhere. But, you know, you learn. I'm keeping it on my bucket list. There you Thank go. you very much, Ava. Oh, my God, it's so good. <laughs> and their coffee's really good, too. Oh, yeah, that's what I've heard, She's too. Like Those like their hot chocolate. Like, everything's pretty great Oh, there. my gosh. They got it going on. So you, you were there for how long then filming? I was there for two and a half months. Okay. And I was actually over Mardi Gras, too. Oh, so cool. That's what I was going to ask. It was interesting. Um, I unfortunately didn't participate because I was on set so sure. much. And then when I was off set, I was like, I just want to sleep and watch Netflix and Netflix plug. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we just really were chilling when we weren't on set. Sure. But it's crazy. It's a whole different world in New Orleans. I know. I know a lot of people who love it, but wouldn't move there. Yeah. I don't know. I would probably I, the I same. would say it's an amazing place to visit, but especially like really close to the quarter. I don't think I could live there. It's too... It's a lot. Yeah, no, that's what I would think, too. And I would also be, like, very overweight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like when you're taller, food goes to, like, different parts of your body. <laughs> I'm I don't know. i that my, my brother eats so much, and it all has to go to his feet because his feet are very big, and that was always our joke when we were younger. But pro- he eats so much probably food, does. and he's so but skinny. But boy, boys are different. Like, their I know, it makes me mad. So, I know. He's, he, we were literally at the table the other night, and he was like, yeah, if I don't eat this much, I'm just going to, like, start losing so much weight. And I'm like, Devin, oh, I wish. Like 12 cereal boxes I later. I wish. He's eating, like, 4,000 calories a day. It's like Michael Phelps. I think on. Michael Phelps, though, does, like, 20. He actually is built, like, t- Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps. Maybe he's a swimmer. He you should n- be. You never know. Not. Oh, well, n- now that you mentioned that as well, I, c- I kind of want to redirect on the topic of, of filming. So. Yeah. 
a a lot of people like myself included, obviously, I think everyone, entrepreneur, actor, whatever, uh, in general has those kind of moments of like, what's what's next? Mm -hmm. Um, I randomly, I'm not an actress at all, but I decided I wanted to be better on camera. So I took this acting class in LA with this really good acting coach um, over the past like three weeks. It was a four week class. And there was one girl who was in the class on like the second week. And I didn't know her because I literally only watch Sex in the City. (laughs) And so this one chick like went on the stage and performed and I didn't I don't really know what a good actress is, but I didn't think she was amazing. And then the acting coach was asking her, like, you haven't been here in a while. Where have you been? And and she was like, well, I got casted on this one show and then it ended. And then I got like really depressed. And then I got like really obsessed oh. with my Instagram following. She was on a soap opera. Mm-hmm. Young, young girl. Um, And that was like really interesting to me because I was like, OK, I relate to that. I'm not an actress, but I can right. relate to like, you know, things are going really good. And then it's like it's slow. And then it's like, is anything going to pick back up again right yeah it's difficult I mean I realized that because you know I'd, I'd never been on a yeah a movie set or filmed for that length of time and it's funny the mindset of like I booked it finally I'm gonna be working and then when you're done like I literally got off the plane and went to my manager's house to film a self tape like right off the plane and so you go back to the grind like you go back to where you started and especially before the movie came out because I didn't have anything to show anyone. So I was like, I just filmed this awesome movie and then nobody can see that. So I didn't have anything to show for anything I did for many months until it came out. So that was really difficult for me. But um, I mean, I like I said, I, I love the process and I'm still auditioning. But it's again going back to that thing of like finding what's right for me. And I've been working on a lot of, a lot of music now. And, you know, I have the the line that just came out yeah. and all of that. So I'm doing my own personal things while waiting for the next thing to happen. So. No, and I mean, I think that just goes along the message of like really having found your purpose, which most yeah. people don't do at 17. Right. But I'm really lucky. I think that sometimes there are really lucky people who end yeah. up finding their purpose. And mm-hmm. like that is kind of a driving force for a lot of other people who, right. who look up to you and, and want to be like you as well. I know you also had a YouTube video um, that I think you posted called Amazing and Talented Eight-Year-Old Dancer. Oh my gosh! Do you ever look back Wait, on these kind no, of videos? I don't. And, and you're I didn't post everyone. That. Go, watch that, go watch so it. Go watch it. Yeah, you posted that amazing and talent. I think you did. Do you I ever look like back on this stuff and you're like, "Wow, look how far I've come." You know, not really. Okay, I did recently post a, my first solo, and I was four years old in like this little tap costume, and it was really sparkly and feathery. And I was like, wait, I was actually kind of good for four <laughs> because I was always so hard on myself growing up. And I remember watching all my videos, and I'm like, mom, I'm so terrible. Like, oh, I'm so bad. And so um, now that I look back, I'm like, okay, wait, I was I was actually pretty good. Okay, thank you for that. Um, but you know, I think that helped me get better because I was so. I mean, I'm still very hard on myself I hate watching videos but I'm the same though do yeah so I need to look back more but that video was really funny just watching my first solo and like where it all started well you're also like a kid then so it's like different to look back yeah though it's funny half of my body is legs Legs. when I'm four yeah 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 (laughs) no I, I I I saw that too and I was like oh my god this is really cute and I think that Going back sometimes through those things, even if you're not an actress, can really be beneficial to seeing like that growth. And I'm I'm very visual, so like if I watch a video, I can critique myself and then correct it, you know. So I'm very that's kind of how I I grow personally. Yeah. So I think that's because of dance, because I'm very visual in that way. So like even I communicated that with my director, and so whenever she would see something. She's like, you keep doing this or like we need to change this up. She'd be like, OK, come to the screen and then we'd watch it and then, you know, go back. So that's cool. But you, I think we all have to know how we learn and how, what is best for us. You know? Were there times as well when you were on that set and this was your first movie, correct? Yeah. Where you were like, I can't do this. This is really hard. Like, I'm embarrassed. I don't or like I forgot my lines. Like, I don't I don't know any anything that I feel um, like. I really thought I was going to have those moments because it was my my first thing. Um, I think my hardest thing for me was I had never really expected for me to book something so big and it ha- be my first role and have this cast that was a part of it, um, but also be the lead. And, you know, the movie was kind of on my shoulders to carry it. And I wanted to do not only like myself justice and everybody else justice, but like the story because it meant so yeah. much to me. So I think the hardest thing for me to learn was just believing in myself. And I remember there was this one time um, 
that the director came over to me and she was like, Ava, I want you to know that you did not book this role because you were tall. Oh. We have so many people. Because that was always in the back of my mind of like, oh, interesting. I would tell people that I booked tall girl and they'd go, oh, typecasting. And I'm like, no. What is typecasting? Typecast. Like, um, what would typecast be? Like, if you look like Cinderella, okay. they'd be like, oh, that makes sure. sense. Or, um, yeah, because I'm tall, mm-hmm. they would say, oh, typecast, because that's you're mm-hmm. tall. And they would pretty much just say that oh that's the reason you booked it and so that was kind of always in the back of my head and I was like no I booked this because of the hard work that I've put into my craft because that means so much to me so her saying that to me was like a huge turning point that I didn't know I needed and it really just like I was like you're right you know like they saw so many tall people and even when I walked into the audition room I was like whoa, (laughs) there are way more tall people than I thought in this world. And so that was something that really helped me. And then also, I mean, I, I told her, you know, she obviously knew that I danced. So there was one scene to where she was like, Ava, you're getting in your head. Like, and she's like, I want everybody to leave this room. And so she took me over and she goes, this is the song that I envision for your character. And I want you to dance to it. And so she took me over to the corner and I danced to it. And I went back and she was like, there we go. We found our thing. So that was kind of our thing. If like she ever saw that I really was like getting hard on myself or getting down, she would be like, okay, dance it out, listen to the song, come back. We're going to do it. So that was re- like really, really cool for me. Oh, I love that. And I yeah. mean, it's it's so hard to not critique yourself. Oh, so hard. Constantly. And especially in acting because I found that it was the only thing that there was no right or wrong. Sure. And so you're kind of just like, huh. Here I am. This is what I'm doing. If I suck, I suck. And that's embarrassing. But if I don't, then cool. <laughs> you know, so it was a really difficult thing. Well, bef- before I came to meet you for this interview, um, I had a meeting with somebody who runs this really cool nonprofit. And she asked me, like, what's your advice for people who want to be entrepreneurs? I mean, it's a little different, obviously, being an actress. But in a sense, you do work for yourself. Oh, yeah. So you have that mindset. And I always shy away from saying it. But quite often, I want to say, like, don't do it unless it's something that like wakes you up in the middle of the night because it is so hard. And once you become even a little bit successful and you can probably relate to this, that drive only like becomes so much more passionate. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a negative because you find yourself constantly questioning yourself. Like sometimes comparing yourself gets worse. I mean, have you ever dealt with that? Um, Yeah, I think I think the hardest thing for me was that I actually had so many people in my life that were really close to me telling me that I couldn't do it and that I wasn't good enough and that I wasn't going to make it. And I feel that at that point, I really could have given up and I could have listened to them. And if that was my choice, then that would have shown me that this wasn't my career path. But because I kept going and that fueled me more, that just made me realize that like this is truly what I want to do like this is the thing that I want to do for the rest of my life so um, I think that you know going through everything if you still have that drive then keep going for it but if you don't then I I don't I don't know if that's the thing for you you know what I mean (laughs) so um, yeah I mean I love it and keep doing it because I love it and I think that if you don't, then find something else. Find a new passion that makes you excited about it. Well, that's what I like to call the 1% because there really is 1% of people who are willing to work so hard and relentlessly over such a period of time and not give up. And you said right. it right there. You easily could have given up. Same mm-hmm. with all the rejection anytime. Right. And it's so easy to to give up. So I think it's really like important that you really find that fire deep inside yep. of you and you just keep pushing and then you can probably go back to now everyone who is like oh like you weren't gonna do it and now you're like well look at me I did it and I right. didn't listen to any of you yeah and I, I think it's it's so crazy that there are so many people that feel the need to tell someone that they can't do it and I think honestly my biggest advice is like if you have that thing in your gut that tells you that this is what you're supposed to be doing do it and nothing and else do, matters do not let anyone yeah. stop you no matter who it is like no matter who it is. <laughs> Let's talk about Self Love Club. Yes. So that's your clothing line. Yes. And you've done something really unique with the line and you've put all of the words backwards, correct? Yes. So tell us about that. So um, I 
going back, I mean, obviously, I had a really difficult time with cyberbullying and, you know, bullying in schools well, and body Before shaming. you were on the show or um, just growing up? Just growing up. Like, um, I mean, bullying. And then when I got on Dance Moms and, you know, obviously got some exposure, I had some really terrible things that were said to me and that, you know, really got in my head. I know a lot of people say block out the haters, but my view is we're humans and we can't. Everything that's said to us will stick with us, but it's really what we do with that and how we um, how we let it affect us. Um, so I really wanted to take my journey of finding self-love because that was really the thing that like helped me get through it is just realizing my qualities that I loved about myself and that these people really didn't know me for who I am. Um, so I really wanted to take my experience and help people because I know that so many of us are going through it and I still struggle with it. It's not a thing that when you find it, you have it. You know, it's a constant battle. So Self Love Club came about because of me just wanting to have something that was, that could be a movement, that could be a club of just love and, and a reminder that we are worth it, that you are beautiful, that you are loved. And so those are the sayings that are on the shirts of like, um, yeah, you are worth it. You are beautiful. You are loved. I love me. And so they're backwards so that when you look in the mirror, you're seeing them for yourself. Because I felt that one of the most negative spaces was the mirror. And I was like, I want to change that because we constantly have that negative reminder or that comparing or judgment constantly around us or on social media. And so I was like, what could be that constant reminder? And we're always looking in the mirror and what we look like. So um, I think just turning that around was really my mission and just um, creating something that was positive and full of love. And hopefully that came across in it. But I'm, I'm really, really excited. And I also teamed up with a company called Known Supply, which they are amazing, amazing to begin with. They are a company who actually supplies uh, jobs for women in third world countries to where they're in better housing and they're getting paid for wages. And not only are they doing that, but we can also connect with them as um, the consumer. So there's their faces are on the tags and they also sign the shirts. So then you can look them up on the website and see their story. And it really just connects um, the, the thought of actually someone working to put these clothes together because I feel like we take that for granted so much in a day and time to where we can order anything or just go to the mall and don't really think of the people that are behind it. So it's also connecting that, which I think is cool to have a brand that can do that and then also adding the self-love club aspect. So. And you can find those at knownsupply.com? Knownsupply.com, yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, you know, people would look at you now and think, all right, this girl's already successful. Um, she's, she's, already, she's already done it. TV show, movie, like... What 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 else what else can she do that will like inspire people? She's like my inspiration, and, and that's it. And I, I don't get the sense from you that you're ever gonna like think that's it. Never gonna stop. No. Um, I mean, I think this is just the beginning. I want to grow more, and um, obviously, I want to act more because oh, I just love it so much. I honestly don't think I could live without doing what I love because I'm just so passionate about it. If I could be on set 365 days every year I would do it because I just I love it so much um, but I also have music going on and I think the thing that's honestly on the top of my list is just being a positive influence for kids and you know doing as much good as I can because I think that's the most important thing and you know with everything I do it will constantly be changing but that won't you know that yeah. is kind of my rock of hopefully influencing as Your many purpose. people as I can yeah, yeah. for sure so it's always going to keep going, always going to. And you're 17, yeah. so most 17-year-olds yeah. are thinking about college, which I assume right. you might not be thinking about. Um, I, I'm not sure that that's my path. Um, I actually graduated two years ago. I graduated in 2018. Did you take online school? Almost two years ago. Um, yeah, so I, I was, okay. I was um, in a charter school for okay. high school. Okay. So I just went over the summer and then um, oh, okay. tested out of some things, but... Yeah, I graduated in 2018, so I've had, you know, some time to be able to work and do that and really think about it and figure it out, but I don't think that as of right now, college is my path, but I'm still 17, so I still have some time that if I, like, want to 
jump you could go to something. college at any time but exactly yeah i'm like i could be 40 years old going to college i don't care <laughs> exactly i mean but, i didn't i didn't go to college but i i don't necessarily advise people who haven't found their purpose at like 17 right. i'm 22 to, to not go to college because um, I feel like if you can find your purpose like that's so great and I don't right. like I don't think we need to go to college exactly and I also feel like a lot of people coming out of high school feel so pressured that they need to that they mm-hmm. fall into the wrong um, like choice of like career path and then they go to college and then they're like wait no that's not what I want to do so I want to make sure that if I do it then that's something that I really want to do um, but I also feel that there's so many different outlets for us to educate ourselves now that um, there's a lot of ways for us to do it on our own, too. Um, and, I mean, life teaches you a lot also. So. Oh, yeah, just living in general yeah. and especially being in entertainment. I mean, you grow yeah. up so fast. You learn so much. For a 17, you're like, incredibly, incredibly mature. Thank you. But, I mean, most people obviously are not in entertainment, so they're not, right. like, kind of having that experience. Yeah, for sure. And it's you have to be very independent and very strong-willed and... Um, yeah, you, you learn a lot of things that people learn very a lot later in life. Or learn right. like in college. Right, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really thankful for it. My mom was also really good on like making me street smart and very aware at a young age, which you really do need in this industry. You know? Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it definitely makes you grow up. But I feel like I was always like even before I was in the industry, I was just like an old soul. I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just... I was always more mature, like just hanging out with people that were sure. older than me. And I always danced with people that were older than me also. So just had a different mindset than my peers. Most people <laughs> that I feel like I know in entertainment, too, were the same. Like we all were yeah. kind of hanging out with and people who were like older. And you all kind of like each other, too. Yeah. I feel like when I came out to L.A., you just like, you can really easily find your people out here, which was really cool. And like being able to, one thing I love about L.A. is you can like really create this family of like, you're not going to school with them, so you're not, like, forced to be, you know, friends with anyone you normally wouldn't. So you kind of find people who have very similar interests and similar values out here, and you can really pick and choose who you want to surround yourself with. What year did you come out here? How long have you been in L.A. for? I've only been here for, like, three, four years. Okay, I've only been here for, like, two and a half. So you would oh, have come wow. out here then when you were 15? I was 15. 15, yeah. which is which is 14, young. 15, yeah. Um, I mean, for, for anyone who's listening and is like, I am 17 and I don't really have supportive parents right. and like, I want to move to LA and like work at a coffee shop and act right. or sing or produce whatever. What's one piece of advice? I say age is just a number. Honestly, I have, I have so many people constantly telling me how young I am and that I have time, but I have the drive now and I have the passion now. So I say, whenever you have that, do it and go for it and don't let anyone tell you because of your age that it's it's not the right time because if it's supposed to happen it'll happen i i agree people say always the same thing to yeah. me about the age it almost gives me more anxiety when somebody's like you have so much time i'm like i know what do you mean i have like, like i have no time i have no time, time. <laughs> no, no i think the all. same thing yeah so and and it's you know it's very specific to different people yeah. i mean if you have that maturity level and you're already educated in your field then it shouldn't be an issue i mean there's certain things that obviously you need to be old enough to do but I mean, this industry isn't one of those. I wish I started acting when I was like five. Well, I, I want to be a child actor. I look at you and I'm like, oh my God, I'm 22 and she's 17. And then I'm like, oh, we're like on, it's it's completely different. You're and so I, young. I, I know, but I'm like, you're so young. I know, but like, I actually, like, I thought you were older yeah. too. Like, not looks wise, but just. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's the same for you. And, and it's so funny. Everyone I know, um, well, and, and especially like being at Disney, everyone there is like, you have these 14, 15 year old kids. And I look at them and I'm like, Number one, like, I don't, I mean, maybe I was like that at 14, but also I don't know if it's like the concept of that. They're just always in front of the camera. Like what? Right. But I'm like these kids, I mean, it's it's kind of scary. <laughs> like, I mean, you are 15. Like, that's really like scary that you're so mature. It's also really cool. Yeah. But it's like sometimes like, ah, I just want to like, it was specifically like the like little kids on the shows. I just was oh like, my, my gosh, viewers are like so it's cute. It's so and, crazy. Like, Even like in the dance industry just what I'm seeing of like them growing up and their talent at a young age like I feel like everything is just really taking the next level and it's probably because of social media because we're so aware and um there's there's so many things that are open to us now and we are able to view like I remember in the midwest growing up like we were so behind on trends that were happening in LA and New York but that by the time they got to us we were so far behind but now we have social media and we can look at what people are doing and the level that they're at and so now it's everybody trying to top that so now we have like 
that awareness to be able to be on that level, you know. Do you think that's a good thing or a negative thing? I think I think social media in the aspect of like awareness and especially our um our generation being so politically aware of what's going on um in in our world is amazing and I think also it's it's definitely made us a lot more open minded to um you know, who people want to be and um, what people are doing, which I think is great. But I also think that it's kind of created this false reality of like what people's lives are because they're not like that. I mean, social media, when it first came out, was very like taking my dogs for a walk. We didn't even have filters. Like what was editing? What was Facetune? And now it's like a personal vlog. It's a professional like version of ourselves that we put out and so I think that it's you know just grasping that concept of this is really not who people are is very important and I try to be as real as possible as I can and like really reach out to my fans and be there for them um but I feel that there are certain people that do have um the wrong intentions on social media and so I think it's just being aware of that and kind of you know weeding through those um and just not comparing ourselves to everything but it's difficult I mean I find myself oops, <laughs> I find myself um you know just scrolling through my pe- my page being like oh my god she's so pretty or like her body or whatever it well, is it's inevitable that you're, anyone's gonna think yeah that. we're gonna you know we do that but it's just saying you know what no self-love I love myself yeah. I'm I'm cool the way I am I have this and I have you know so um like I said I think it's just being aware of what is going on through your brain and whether that's healthy or if it's not. But I am I am thankful for social media and extremely thankful for the platform that I have now that I can use in a positive way because I really think that we do need that a lot right now. Yeah, <laughs> I like that you say that. And it's so obvious in, in my opinion, but I know other people struggle with this is that it's to me, it's very clear when somebody is authentic on social media or not. Right. But I think sometimes, you know, young people are so vulnerable. Like we're all looking for like who's going to inspire us and like who's that person and so we're so easily just like captivated by somebody Mm -hmm. when in reality it's it's not it's not always that easy like behind the scenes um so I feel like that's a really clear thing is like to go on social media and just know who the kind of people that you are um and you want to follow yeah I think it's it's really important because it's like I said earlier it's just like who we surround ourselves with honestly the, the people that we follow are a part of that group. It's who we're influenced by. And we may not think about that all the time like that, but they are a part of your life. Yeah. And so they are influencing you in, in some way, whether we actually know it or not. So I think it's really being aware of like who that is and if they are like representing you well. <laughs> Ava, I have two questions left for you. Okay. Um, I have one question. And um, my question is, some time ago, somebody asked me, um, it was a producer, and he said to me in this meeting, he said, um, who are you? And I looked at him, and I this was when I was with Disney, and I gave this, like, I'm this young person, and I'm trying to inspire teens to be fearless. And he looked at me and was like, can you just shut the fuck up? Like, actually, who <laughs> are you? So I'm really curious. How mm. would you answer that question? That's such and a hard question. And it took me. It was, and now it's my thing. I'm going to ask every guest oh, this. Oh, that is such a hard and question. And it's such a hard question. It really is. Who am I? And especially um, when you're in front of the camera all the time, like you're so trained to be like, hi, I'm Ava. Like, hi, I'm Alexa. And like, right. this is who I am. But- and, and tell about, yeah, your little bullet points of your life. Yeah. Um, who am I? Um, oh, that's I remember so what my answer hard. was. Yeah. That's so hard. I would say um, I'm... Someone who's who's kind, who's trustworthy, who's really hardworking, who, oh, this is hard, has confidence sometimes, but is always struggling with that. And I think that's important to be honest about. Um, I'm someone who's really lucky to love what I do, love to talk, love food. <laughs> Did I say that? I love food. Food is great. Um, I don't know if that's who I am, but it really is. No, my, um, that's better than my first answer. But maybe I prepped you to be like, don't say. I don't know. I would say, yeah. And I'm, I'm really short. I'm you, kidding. Oh my, wait, I looked at you and was like, do you mean like you're short talking? Like no. what? <laughs> oh my gosh. You're I'm funny. Um, oh, no, that's a I good. I don't know if that was an okay answer. No, that's, that's good. That's I think hard. I said something like, 
not like that, but like on a similar like wavelength of that, like my second time around right. after like the. It's really hard. And then it makes you think you're like, who am I? I know. I know. Well, that's why I like the question. That's why I'm going to start asking people No, that's a great it. question. Um, it's going to make me think. I'm going to be thinking and be like, why did I say that? Yeah. But, but there's also the person that you want people to see. And then there's like right. the, the, the you, I guess, kind of behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And, I, and a lot of times like you want it to be one. But sometimes, I mean, there's I bet many times where you're like, I'm not going to post this on social media. Yeah. Like it's, it's personal because you're right. a human behind the camera. And that's what people need to know. Right. Exactly. And I think, you know, that's the most important thing. I've actually gotten the question a lot. Like, have you always been so confident? And, you know, I do look at myself as a, a confident person, but I don't always have confidence. You know, and so I think I like that, that. Oh, thank you. Um, but I think that's like really important for us to be honest about because I feel like so many, especially girls, just struggle with that all the time. And I think them knowing that like we all do, no matter how good you may think our lives look, we all are struggling with that. So I don't know. I try to be as honest as possible, but sometimes personal things are really difficult yeah, to I mean, share. Yeah, of course. And, you know? I, and confidence is not something you come to overnight. I get asked that question a lot, no. too, and I say the same thing. I mean, I've been doing this since I was 12. Right. You've been doing That's it since, amazing. like, younger than I was. And, like, mm-hmm. now it's, like, people are you're like, oh, you're so confident. But it's like, okay, but I wasn't at 12, right. 30, 50, like, and, everywhere to now. Right. And I have days to where I'm like, oh, no, I'm not. And then I have days to where I'm like, ooh, looking good today, <laughs> you know? And we all have those. So, um yeah, I mean, we're all humans, human yeah, beings. perfection doesn't exist. No, yeah. it really does not. doesn't. Well, Ava, where can everyone find you on social media? Can they find me? There's so many places <laughs> that I have to remember. Um, so Instagram is ava.michelle. My YouTube is Ava Michelle. My Facebook, I think, is Ava Michelle. Maybe official after that. I don't know. Um, and then my Twitter, I think, is Ava Michelle 2002 Let's hope I did those right. And if not, just type in Ava Michelle and hopefully you find me. There's got to be someone. It's either Michelle Ava or like Ava Michelle. Yeah, I guess you'd have to find. something like that. I'm on TikTok to too, but I really don't know my my username. And I also am not very active. I, have I no apologize for it. that. I watched like Reese Witherspoon's kid. Try, did you see that video? Try and like explain TikTok to her. No. I was looking at it. I was Wait, like, that's probably a really fun video. It was just video. like so, I, I don't understand that that's platform. Hilarious. But I also just love that Jennifer Aniston broke Instagram for like a day. Right? I know. Oh my God. Like so deserving but of I it But I also too. like, she's like my favorite person ever. I was actually going to be here for Halloween. My friends were going to be friends. Oh my God. Are you going yeah. to now? Um. I, I don't know. We're still we're still trying to decide. Send me Maybe more people added to the groups, yeah. and then we're like, do we not include those friends. people and friends? We need some more characters. So I could see you just um, like Jennifer. Like you could just be Jennifer Aniston. Like, do we need the friends let's attached? Just, do that. just like be her. You know, I'd be like, do you need a daughter, a really tall daughter? Yeah. Maybe you're married to like The Rock or something. I don't know. <laughs> Can somebody here send us Jennifer Aniston's agent? There and we we're go. Gonna make Ava no, her, no, not her agent. Her, just manager, her, her number. Her number. Just her number. Email's we're gonna be fine. friends. Like okay? I think we can get like a direct LinkedIn contact. Yeah. Like whatever. I feel like. We're we're soul sisters, and she's gonna know that, you know. I love her, but like also somebody that's a really good example of like really like worked their way. She up. really Didn't has happen overnight. No, she's amazing. So well, that was all your social links, I guess. I think so. And then you can buy the clothing at Known Supply. Yes, at Known Supply dot com or the link in my bio on Instagram. So well, thank you so much for stopping thank by you. and for living so your life so unfiltered. It was such an awesome. Um, opportunity to talk with you and i'm so, so excited to see where you are in Aww. five years i don't know if you're still growing but like no maybe i'm not growing you're, oh she stopped i'm growing. not all I'm right stopped. i want to keep but growing, you never know so okay you, you never know you know i'll just give you a little i'm energy five nine and a half okay. but i would love to be six you are one. tall i am tall yeah. yeah i remember um when i was in the eighth grade and i was modeling and i remember my modeling agent would always be like one more inch one more inch and i would google like how to grow and it would be like don't drink coffee and then like what was what else would they say well you probably didn't look this up because you're already tall well you know what's funny is that i have drank coffee my entire life so i actually think it might have the opposite effect effect. or or i would be six seven um but it was really funny funny memory is that i remember i was sitting at panera with my mom i was like mom i want a cell phone i think it was like eight and she was like okay i'll give you one if you stop growing so i was like I had all these ideas. I was like, how can I stop growing? How Just for like a little bit to Please prove stop. it to my mom. And I was, and she's like, we'll put a brick on your head. Oh and God, I was like, amazing. wait, this is a great idea. I never did it, but I, I just think that's really funny. I think that's a fabulous thing to say to like any parents who are listening to like that they don't want to give their kids a phone. Just tell right. them like stop growing because you can't really stop, stop growing. Because that's, a, I know. Right? It, it was really a great move on her yeah. end. And for me, I really thought it was possible. So, I mean, it was 
Smart parenting move. <laughs> Next time I talk to a mom, I'm going to say that because I'm go. like anti cell phones before the age of like That's great. You know, 30. No, just But then kidding. I feel like, what if they do and then they'll stop feel growing. like your mom well, like cursed screwed. you? <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope that they don't stop growing. Let's in hope. No. The eighth grade. Or if they do, then extra iPhones for Christmas. Yeah, or, or like some really great drag queen heels. Great. Or bring back a black I'll, I'll lend them mine. Love a good. So I love good heels and I love. Right. Those are great. Love a nice cell phone for free. So <laughs> anyway, but thank you so much for stopping by. That thank is a you. wrap for this episode Woo-hoo. of This Is Life Unfiltered. Make sure to continue to follow the podcast as well as my personal social media, which is at Alexa underscore Curtis. And after every episode, you can go to lifeunfilteredalexa.com to find out more about the guest, as well as listen to the direct podcast interview, as well as Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, all of them. And then make sure to subscribe on the App Store as well so you guys can tell me who you want to hear next on this is life unfiltered and i'll see you guys next week